Hey everybody, here is me going through the radar question. The Hillsborough Township Police Department hires an electrical engineer to set up a radar detector to let drivers know their speeds as they go through a 25 mile per hour zone. The police department wants to know when and if people are speeding. After the engineer sets up the radar, she drives through the zone so that the radar collects the following data. There are 1,609 meters in one mile. And it looks like we got some data about the distance that the engineer is from the detector and the time of day. Time of day can seem a little weird because we've been working a lot with just data collection device, stopwatches, computers that measure time just in seconds from some starting point. But a uh, police department might want to know what time it is so they can know when people are speeding. So this is a fine thing uh, that this device would actually create. But we'll be able to work through this because it looks like all these times are just seconds. And we can just start at 12.46 and 9 seconds and go to 10 and 11 and 12 and 13 14 and so on. So I'm going to make a graph and I will just call this uh, radar detector. And for my title, I'm going to use my y-axis versus my x-axis. And I'm going to just say that this is my distance versus my time. Graphs should always be in y versus x format. And I'll come over here, and that is what this is. It's distance, and I could even say distance from detector. And I'll make that zero. And then it looks like I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines going up to 66. I'll have each one of these represent seven. So that's to 14, and then to 28, and then to 42, and then to 56, and then up to 70. And that distance from the detector is measured in meters. On here, this is time, measured in seconds. And I'm going to call time, like, I'm going to say that that is nine seconds right there. So this is like 12.46.09. I'm just going to keep that going. And I'm just going to say 10, and then 11, and 12, and 13, and then 14. In order to say that that is when these happened. So then now it just comes down to plotting these points. At 9, we were at 66, and that's going to be reasonably about here. I'm not going to stress out too much about plotting points. Uh, this is actually going to be easier if I label every single one. 21, uh, that's going to be 35, that's going to be 49, and that's going to be 63. So that means 51 is going to hang out like right about here. 11 at 40 is going to be about there. 12 at 27 is going to be about there. 13 seconds right at 14. And then 14 is down here at 2. So checking to make sure I have everything I need. I've got a title. I've got labeled axis with units, time in seconds, distance from detector in meters. I've got proper scales that each of these, this is always seven meters, seven meters, seven meters. And every two blocks is one second, one second, one second, one second. So that's good. Last thing I need is a trend line. So I'm going to come over here. And I have to make, as best as I can, a straight line that fits all of this data. So I'm not going to connect these dots. I'm just going to show one trend to kind of fit all of them. But it looks reasonably like this is something that's happening here. Now down here, I've got this point below my line. If I extend that, I've got these, some of these points above. And some of them happen to be right on my data. That's great. That's what I am really looking for, that I can express what happened with my data. Because if I'm going to determine the speed of the engineer's car, I am not going to just look at my data points. Data is imperfect, and we can't just trust two of these. 
to figure out a speed. But the trend line took into account all of my data points together, and that is something I can trust. So if I'm going to use my graph to do that, what I'm going to do is find the slope of the trend line. Slope tells me about change, and in this case, slope, and in all cases, slope is always delta y over delta x. In this case, that's going to be a change in distance, my y-axis, over a change in time, uh, going from, say, 9 seconds to 12 seconds, or 10 to 13, or whatever I choose. And as far as choosing points on this graph that work the best, I'm going to look for points that are really on my trend line that also fit with grid lines. They're the easiest to find. That's a good point right there. Keep in mind that that's not that data point at 10 seconds. That's not 1051. That was pretty imperfect. That's just one data point that can have lots of error in it. All data does. But this trend line hits at the point 10 seconds, comma 49 meters. That is a point on this trend line. I'm going to find the slope. Another point that goes through here is this point. This happens to be a data point, but I'm not, I do not care about the data. I want my trend line. This is the point 13 seconds, comma, 14 meters. Because again, if I looked at just a trend line, if I draw it in blue, like two of these points together, if I chose to connect like just these two, I would have a very different trend line from what's happening. Or if I chose to look at these two points, I'd be going too fast or too slow. So this trend line takes into account all of the data that I have available to me. Calculating slope, pretty easy. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And that is simply going to be, uh, what do we got? I'll call this point 1, I'll call this point 2, so that's 14 meters minus 49 meters over 13 seconds minus 10 seconds. That simplifies, oh, 14, that is going to be negative 35 meters over 3 seconds. Uh, and let me get my calculator. And it looks like that is 11.67. We're really negative. Speed doesn't depend upon direction. This engineer happens to be going towards the zero point, towards the radar. Uh, that's fine. Uh, her actual speed, though, I'll say 11.7 meters per second. And that's a fine like, value to get. Again, the slope was negative, but we can just say her speed was positive. Speed does not indicate direction. But I'm not going to be intimidated by the fact that this trend line is going the negative direction. Just data. That's all it is. All right. And then, is this radar display functioning properly? Because it says 29 miles per hour. Radar the detectors will often do that. They'll make their calculations in meters and display something in miles per hour so people can relate that to what they see on their odometer. But a lot of the physicists will use metric units and SI units when they're building the actual devices. And then those devices will just make a conversion just like this. Well, we have 11.7 meters per second, and now I can convert that by saying, all right, uh, I'm going to turn meters into miles, and I'm going to turn seconds into hours. And then my 11.7 becomes 26.1 miles per hour. And I would say that that is close enough. So the answer to this question is yes. 
uh, the like measurements that are, get, that are getting are relatively close to 29 miles per hour. On a test or a quiz, if you ever had to make the call of 26, you wouldn't have to make a call of 26 was pretty close to 29. Uh, our values would be either like reasonably close, plus or minus 3, or way far off. I would say that 15 would be an unrealistic thing, or if this radar detector was displaying that the engineer was moving 45 miles per hour, that would be wrong. Yes, 26.1 miles per hour is reasonably close. to the displayed 29 miles per hour. Often there'll be little disclaimers written on the back of these or on radar guns that say plus or minus 5 miles per hour. And that's what we're looking for. So that's working through the radar problem. Make sure you are feeling good for your upcoming quiz.